note, Lord, Lord Reesdale, for securing this debate. And um, it's a delight to speak after the noble lady, Baroness Boycott, who said many of the things I was going to say, so I'm, I've made, done a quick rejig. But I want to start with the um, words of Minette Batters, the NFU president from the Oxford Farming Conference of a week or so back. Uh, I quote, we have trade policy here and we have agricultural policy here. They're a million miles apart. Now, we're well used to a lack of joined up government, but this is truly an extreme example of not failure to join up, but absolute contradiction in government policy. Now, I'm going to focus on Australia for reasons made obvious by my accent. Uh, and building on the points that the noble Lady Baroness Boycott said, use of antibiotics as growth promotants. That is a risk, a huge risk of antimicrobial resistance. That's a risk to our medicine. There are only voluntary guidelines for stocking density of broiler chickens and laying hens. There is, in terms of carbon emissions, Australian beef is 1.5 times as bad as British beef. And tree cover, biodiversity destruction, uh, is 180 times as high in Australia as it is in the UK. Now, I have much experience of Australian agriculture. I have mustered paddocks, fields sort of, of 10,000 hectares. Sheep or cattle run on those and are mustered two or three times a year. How is your Yorkshire Dales farmer, who calls a vet every time an animal gets ill, going to compete with that? Now, the noble Lord, Lord Willie, suggests that this debate is taking us back to the uh, 19th century Corn Law debates. Well, he's certainly going back to 19th century ideas about food and farming systems. Those of us who are seeking to improve the health of our food, to have high animal welfare standards and environmental standards, are speaking for the citizens of the 21st century.